I'm making a web page with text editor in the browser. I'm learning HTML code to make the, the web page. We start with Noodle Tools at the beginning of the year when we start our National History Day project. And during that project, kids have to write an in-depth research paper. And we set all of our 8th graders up with Noodle Tools, start teaching them about teaching them about primary and secondary sources. It helps them, I mean, it's foolproof. It step-by-step -step helps kids know how to properly cite websites, books, magazines, interviews, video clips. Right now we're working on a digital project um, that involves using primary documents, because I think it's wonderful to think of old documents and associating them with technology. So you have students who are researching Civil War databases um, for letters and diaries that were written during the Civil War. They're finding a group of letters or a diary from a single soldier, they're reading through the letters, they're researching them, and they're extracting information to create a digital timeline using one of three tools. And um, that digital timeline will show what the soldier did during the Civil War, how they felt, and where they were, as well as give references to outside sources, video, text, maps, uh, that will help the viewer of the timeline uh, understand what the soldier went through. And the three choices they have are they can create a timeline, an interactive timeline using timetoast.com, they can do a Google Earth field trip, or they can complete a web page using Weebly. So in my project, I'm creating a website that tells about an unsung hero of the Civil War, and mine, his name is John R. Miller, and basically what I'm doing is I'm looking through all of his letters that he wrote home to his family, and um, I'm reading through them and finding what he was doing at the time and how he felt about it, and I'm putting it on the website so that he, everyone will know about what he did. I'm doing a Time Toast project on Joseph Saberton, who was a private in the Civil War. Um, we used Animoto, a free Web 2.0 tool, to make book trailers. And a book trailer is kind of similar to a movie trailer. You just want to draw the reader in, um, give them enough information to know what they're going to be reading, but not so much that you give away too much. Um, once we made those, um, we posted them on my webpage. And then we also worked closely with the library to um, make QR codes um, to put um, on the covers of books that students could use a smart device to link directly to the Animoto video. And they could use that video to see whether they wanted to um, read that book. I'm taking this online math class, and it's called Math One, and it's a high school credit. This class is offered through the North Carolina Virtual Public School website. Uh, we use robotics as part of our program for Project Lead the Way, which is a new class that we are teaching at Owen Middle School this year. Um, our robotics class goes into detail with programming and also building the actual robots. When we make the Horseshoe News video, we have a storyboard and that explains <laughs> what we're going to do over the course of the week that we're doing it. We love educations in math. Um, one thing that I try to get my kids to do is to explain their thinking. And so by using the program Educreations, they are able to speak and write. Um, they can import text if they want to. Many of my students have started taking a picture of the problem that they're doing or a picture of information that goes with their problem and then they juxtapose that with their own speaking and then they'll write, they can circle on that, that image. And so they're really able to have a voice in the classroom that I can hear without them being self-conscious sometimes in front of their peers. And um, those educations go back to my dashboard and I can click on them wherever I am and then that student speaks to me in their own voice about what they know about a problem. We have used it in science class um, in the very same way. We have learning targets in science as well. In science, they pull in more images, it seems like, than they do in math. In math, they're working problems for me and telling me how they, how they solve those. 
But in science, they pull in video to support them. They might pull in um, an image to support them. And again, a very strong component of edge creations is they can draw on that image. The media specialist here, Owen, and I um, collaborated to create a Symbaloo, which is sort of a um, hosting site for different bookmarks. But we've used it to pair Web 2.0 tools that students and teachers might want to use alongside a video tutorial that's a screencast it shows you um, step by step exactly how you can use the web 2.0 tools and that gives teachers and students a little more autonomy they can teach themselves how to use a tool rather than wait around um, to get that from someone else in our school it's hard to differentiate between digital learning and learning uh, use of technology is commonplace and collaboration among teachers and students who produce as well as consume information is shifting the paradigm of what it means to teach and learn. Um, and digital learning is really the catalyst for this change.